During those regressions, sometimes we go randomly to other planets. A, a lot of people don't go to planets, but I have a lot of clients that just sort of travel around the universe. But I also believe that within the light, there is another illusion that we are also trying to transcend. Now, this has been one of the most interesting conversations I've had. I really love getting into extraterrestrial. I am here today with Hillary. Lee Han. She is a returning guest. She is a between life regressionist and hypnotherapist. Today, we're going to talk about some fascinating subjects that she's run across in her work, ranging from extraterrestrial experiences to the Council of Light. She's had experiences where her clients have traveled to the Council of Light and beings from other worlds and just really fascinating stuff. So Hillary, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Melissa. Yeah, I'm so glad to be back. So happy to share because it's the stuff that's coming through. I don't know if the it's the times we live in or, or what, but some amazing stuff is coming through. So I'm happy to, happy to be part of it and share experiences. Me too. I really enjoyed our previous interactions. And yeah, a lot of people are saying the same thing, that crazy things are coming through right now. And I, I wonder if it's just because our consciousness is expanding to the point where we can accept more. I, I think so. You know, we'll get into this a little later on. But just on that note, when I have clients that are talking to, say, the Council of Light, they are bringing forward knowledge of how... You know, we we would have lived lives previously where we would be burned for these kinds of, you know, things going on now and people just wouldn't understand it. But now we seem to be in a time and a place in the universe where it's OK to talk about these things. Right. It's OK. And the more of us that get into it and talk about it, it's like everybody's you know, one person can raise a lot of people's vibration, you know, so. Right. And on that note, something that's come more into the public awareness recently is the topic of extraterrestrials, or I think the <laughs> correct word is non-human intelligence or something yeah. like that. And you have had experiences where, or your clients have had experiences where they've either been or interacted with extraterrestrial beings would you like to share a little bit about that yeah absolutely so as you know uh as your listeners are learning i do life between lives and past life regression so during those regressions sometimes we go randomly to other planets sometimes the person comes to me wanting to go to other planets and i really believe as a hypnotist, I really believe intention is so important. So if you, you know, come to me, whether online or in my office, and you go, I, I want to experience an alien life, the intention is so wonderful. And it takes you to wherever you're meant to go that day. So on that note, people have had experiences where they're the, these giants and they, they live on this planet. They specific experience that comes to mind are, are these giants and um if you can imagine trees that are taller than buildings you know in cities and these trees are all over the planet and and these giants this specific person was kind of like a shaman in that lifetime as the giant and so that giant would would help the other giants with you know illnesses whatever was going on for them um so that was really beautiful and i remember the client just finding herself climbing the trees these giant trees and then realizing suddenly that all the other giants were jumping off and sort of with their arms outstretched they somehow glided down to the ground and this was like a fun experience and she got to do that and feel that sense of freedom that was really cool 
Others are uh, mermaids. And uh, I kind of joked when I reached out to you, you know, it's not the seashell bra and you know, that kind of mermaid. But these are quite interesting. These mermaids is, are kind of reminiscent of manatees, if you can imagine what a manatee looks like, but l almost like stretched out, very, very thin with these elongated faces and lots of teeth. <laughs> not, not from Disney, or <laughs> not your Disney uh, mermaids. But um, even though, even though when the client ends up being a mermaid and, and quite a number of them have actually gone, I don't know if it's this one planet that has these types of mermaids that people keep going to or if there's more than just that one planet. But what seems to, uh, what seems to be a pattern with that planet is people are working out feeling connected so for instance there's a there's a couple people that come to mind when they were in that session where they're following the other mermaids they're wanting to be connected but they feel very much apart from them and why i bring that up is because a lot of people come to me saying this is going on in my life and i i don't really understand it and i'd like to go back in time to figure out why right so that connection aspect comes up a lot, feeling disconnected in this lifetime and trying to figure out maybe where it comes from or where those patterns started to arise, maybe in past lives on other worlds. <laughs> and those kind of things we bring with us into these lifetimes that we have now. Yeah. That's fascinating. And I have to mention, I interviewed a near-death experiencer by the name of Venia Hill. Mm -hmm. And she, in her experience, was given like a tour of the universe and she saw different types of extraterrestrials. But one planet that she went to specifically was a water world. And she mentioned the manatees. And at oh, that right. point in her life, she had never been exposed to a manatee on Earth. So she didn't know until years later when she was back here in this life and she saw a manatee. And she's like, Oh, that's what I saw in the water world. That is too cool. That's really cool. <laughs> See, it's just, I just love this. <laughs> I just love them. So amazing. And also, you know, when it comes to other worlds, we see Earth as kind of the hardest planet, you know, really hard school to go through. Apparently, there's a lineup to get here, <laughs> you know? But what I'm learning is there's there's other planets that are kind of not hard in the way that Earth is hard, but planets that are very strict. So soldier, soldier type strict, or there's one planet. I can't remember if I said this in my last interview with you. Forgive me if I if I did. But one that stands out in my mind is this planet where that somebody went to where it was kind of these these domes that people lived under and outside of the domes were kind of these creatures that people would want to stay away from so they lived in the domes but but everybody that was alive under the dome they all had a specific thing that they had to do in life that, you know, that a free will was not a big thing, right? Family was not a big thing there on that planet. You basically lived in a pod and that's where your life was. There was no excitement, but there also wasn't really low points. And then something really interesting came through of that sometimes comes through during sessions is that when they're speaking a word to me, the word gets mixed up in the language. So, um, you know, this being that this person's connecting to that lives on that planet is really bringing through messages using the person's own, you know, speech to relay the messages that the person wants to know about. So, for instance, from this planet, 
this person was calling these these bugs that were outside of the domes trash and they had to go kill the trash you know that was their they were a soldier type and they had to go out and and do this and i brought the person back for a moment and i said do do you normally call this stuff trash like bugs trash no what are you talking about okay let's go back i guess okay let's just continue (laughs) so i was really kind of mixed up at that point but it was an interesting learning experience for me because Sometimes things get lost in translation, so to speak. That makes sense. I've heard of that happening with channels, too, where mm-hmm. finding the right word can be difficult because you're, well, in your case, who know, like you're translating a language from another world. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it exactly. <laughs> right. And the person's, the person's bringing it through, mm-hmm. right? Because uh, in my sessions, I I take them to, I kind of jump them through their life and let's go to an interesting day or an important day. And that that person specifically from that lifetime on that planet was actually getting irritated because they were they were saying to me, there's there's no important days. It's just all one. <laughs> it was quite incredible. interesting. It was so very interesting. You mentioned that free will wasn't a big deal on that planet. And that's interesting because I've heard that from like near-death experiencers who leave the body and like have this experience of ultimate knowledge and they'll ask about, you know, what's the purpose of life on Earth? And they'll be told something like, well, Earth is a free will planet and most planets in the universe don't have free will. And a lot of times that throws people a little bit because then they think, well, when I leave Earth and go on to the next thing, am I going to be like controlled? What What does it mean not to have free will? In your experience, how would you answer that question? Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I would say based on, you know, my knowledge and the, the NDEs and, and all that, I would say that free will free will on other planets like we we sign up to have these lifetimes right and we decide kind of what what we want to do how we want to you know go through the life i would say (laughs) no this is just my opinion i guess but i i would say that you know if we're wanting to go to another planet to have an easier life having lots of different crazy things happen is not not a huge deal right so we're we're not going to these say the the underwater planet and going okay i'm gonna do this that and the other thing throughout the lifetime and make big decisions i think these lives from what i hear and what what comes through are largely i mean they're fascinating to us but they're largely easy lives right we are learning basics on those lives, very basic instinctual things, belonging, um, like with that um, mermaid type, right? They seem to be learning on that planet this sense of belonging. There's another planet that comes to mind of people going to, that they're just light. They're just pillars of light. And what they seem to be learning is just this, just this relax into your sense of just self. There's nothing to do. And when you want to go, you go, right? It's almost like on these other planets, you live, but you're, you're also so connected to the other side. The, The veil is not really there. And so when you want to go, when you're done your lesson, you feel like you're done your lesson you can just go yeah that's fascinating it sounds like what you're saying is here on earth we have a much richer experience we have a lot more contrast and that it's a result of having a lot more choices so maybe in a another planet it's not necessarily that they're being controlled or that they you know like it's a 
what would you say, like a tyrannical system or something. It's just that it's a lot more simple. Yes, very simple. It, it seems to be very simple, right? Like that, that person that was a soldier type, um, they had one thing to do. You know? And they weren't, they weren't attached, they didn't have attachments, right? They did their job and they went back to their pod and that was it. And then the next day, the same, the same, the same. Yeah, it's, it's quite fascinating. Did they tell you what that one thing was that they had to do? Yeah, so they were kind of like a soldier that had to suit up and leave the dome and go and kill off these trash, as, mm -hmm. as they called it, right? When we first arrived there, they kept talking about spiders. And I thought, oh, what is this? Is this a jungle? Like, because as a hypnotist, you're, you're right there. You're either on, online or they're in the chair in the office. And you're, you're going, okay, well, you're trying to piece it together a little bit in your mind so that you can keep flowing with them, right? So the spiders ended up being the, the trash, but the spiders kind of morphed and, and were the thing that people were staying away from, right? They were in the domes because of, because of that. It seemed like a very desolate planet, but very regimented you know very not tyrannical but uh, it was quite interesting like we learned that your parents you didn't have parents you just did your job you grew up you did your job you know and you and you passed away when the time was right <laughs> so it was an interesting experience let's just say that's fascinating to hear about the differences from what we experience here did they happen to mention what the purpose of killing the trash was in their language because for some of the planets it's kind of easy to see well on the water world they're learning about mm -hmm. connection and on the light planet maybe they're learning about meditation or connecting with their true self but that one's a little more challenging to think about what would the lesson be there I don't know. Like I could speculate, but it didn't come up. Mm. It didn't come up the lesson. Uh, yeah, I mean, I could I could make my own assumptions about the lesson, but I don't know if it would be correct or not right. because I didn't ask. <laughs> I appreciate your honesty with that. Yeah. So, were there any other worlds that your clients have seen, or does that pretty much cover it? There has been a lot of people that go back to source. It looks like a world, but it's like a gigantic sun, <laughs> right? Wow. I don't know if you've heard that before. Uh, you know, it's kind of like that's where home is. But I've had people, some people are in lineups in outer space to get there and they can, they can see it sort of traveling around this lineup to go back into this, this sun some people see it as an eye and not like a scary eye, <laughs> not like an eyeball in space. But yeah, kind of like a, a what would be that that eye from, they've, they've said it's kind of like an Egyptian eye. The eye of Horus. Yeah, that's, that's exactly it. And, um, and so people have talked about that. I've had people that go all the way back to the moment they split off. And working on that, because that, that can be very emotional, right? We, we're always working our way back to, um, to source, and that splitting off can be very hard, right? So looking at that differently and really integrating that into the, into the body and mind. Uh, a lot of people don't quite go to planets, but I have a lot of clients that just sort of travel around the universe. <laughs> Right. And and go wherever they're called to. Which, you know, oftentimes ends up being the Council of Light or I think. I don't want to get this wrong, but I think Dolores Cannon calls it the Federation of Light. People either go there randomly or they come to me and they say, I want to go there. 
I want to go there. I want to experience this. But yeah, I'm trying to think. Oh, someone went to a planet recently where it was very much like Earth, but it was very joyous. It's almost like Earth has this density about it. And we move through this density or we try to. But this person was there and it was just so light. It's like the house that she lived in was made of light and the people were joyous. And again, a really nice, easy lifetime. And the message that came back from that was try your best to infuse this light into the lifetime that you're living now because they were having a hard time with that. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm fascinated by the people who have gone back to the source. So mm-hmm. you do between life regression. So I'm assuming this is something that must have happened in between lives. And this is a really interesting topic for me because I have memories of what we call the light or the source. Yeah. And some, some experiencers or some like spiritual trains of thought will will claim that we can't go back to the source until we've com- fully completed our evolution, like our spiritual evolution, because we wouldn't mm-hmm. be able to handle that intensity of bliss and light. But then I hear stories like this where people do go back to the light in between incarnations. What are your thoughts on that? I believe... Personally, from what's come through and my own experiences, I believe that we do go back to the light. But I also believe that within the light, there is another illusion, right? So here we're in an illusion. The light, we get there. And there is kind of another illusion that we are also trying to transcend, right? And become even more higher vibrational beings and slowly make our way back to the one. Does that make sense? I don't know. That's what I feel in my heart. That's fascinating. Do you have any thoughts on what kind of illusion would be in the light? I think there is the illusion. So here we we feel very separate. In the light, I think there there is less separateness, but there is still a separateness, right? There, there's a little bit of separateness so that we go, oh, well, I, I want to grow. I want to become an expansive being. I want to be a high vibrational being of light. And so I'm going to dip into different planets. I'm going to go to Earth in order to grow my soul, right? So when we go back, I feel like if we've done a lot of the work that we came here to do or wherever we went to do, then we wind up vibrating higher and higher, right? Until we, I don't know if we're told or (laughs) or what, but uh, until we get there and we go, okay, you know, it's it's okay. I don't have to go back now, right? I can... I can, uh, but you know, I, I do this because it's like higher, but wherever that is, that oneness uh, that we're making our, our way back to, I think that's that high vibrational state. But if we think about contrast, you know, in one of my NDE-like experiences, which, forgive me again, I can't remember if I told you about, but I was... Oh my gosh, like you can't, as you know, you can't even explain the love, the feeling. I mean, we call it love because that's the word for it here on earth. But the feeling that envelops you when I was rising into the light, it's beyond. It's beyond words, as you've heard. So there was this huge contrast, of course, from the body which feels heavy and dense sometimes, to suddenly that, there's a huge contrast. But maybe there's a contrast, you know, like when you go into the light, maybe there's another contrast as you move up in vibration, you know? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It makes sense in the sense of an ever-evolving universe. Mm-hmm. 
And when you read channel texts like Law of One, it talks about how we're evolving up through the densities. And actually, the way it lays it out is so interesting. There's seven densities in an octave is what it calls the source or with the all. But then you move into the first density of the next octave and it just goes up and up and up and up. That's very cool. And that, that kind of brings me to another idea that has come through is music is apparently so important when people have gone to uh, and brought back messages from the Council of Light, um, which, by the way, um, I don't I, I think there's a separation here. But the Council of the Council in Between Lives is kind of like this idea of transcended masters or, you know, people giving you help to get through your life, right? On the other side, after you've passed on or during an NDE, right? Or during hypnosis. But what I'm talking about is Council of Light, which are made up of beings like alien races that, which is just amazing to me. It amazes me every time people have so similar experiences. So they go there um, it's kind of like there's, again, the dome idea, but it's out there in space, almost like it's just this floating place in space. So not on a planet per se, but like just floating there. And there's, I've had people talk about very tall being, you know, your alien type that we associate with aliens. But beautiful, like not not scary in any way, shape, or form. Um, there's a cat being that people talk about, and then light, light beings. So what they have been talking about is really connect with music. Music and water uh, together <laughs> sometimes. Um, but allowing music to raise our vibration. Yeah. <laughs> it's just out there in my mind. It's like, it's just amazing. But maybe that octave, right? That idea of the octaves and the music and our vibration, and our energy are all interconnected. And using music to access the, the council of light. That's another thing too. Oh, wow. So I'll ask you more about the Council of Light, but first, how would you use music to access the Council of Light? Based on what's coming through, I would say if I put it together, I would say that they would ask you to meditate with high vibration music and then just reach out, ask to connect. I truly believe that if you if everybody can connect i have a lot of people ask me well what if i can't connect or can i connect i'm not visual can i still connect there's so many other senses right so there's a feel you know you feel like you're with them you can ask questions and maybe it's audible or maybe you see it right so Using music in meditation is is a beautiful way to connect. They talk about back to the water part. Uh, they talk about infusing your wa your water with high vibration music, anything that raises the vibration of it. Lots of different things. Fascinating. So I want to dive into this topic of the Council of Light. And for the viewers who are watching, I'll just say this first. It's fascinating to me how often this same council comes up. So oh, when I first started researching near-death experience accounts, even back in the beginning when it was just a few really well-known people, the Council of Light was something that people would see over and over and over. So mm -hmm. that's the first place. And then I think you mentioned Dolores Cannon, calling them the Federation of Light or something like that. So, so it was coming up there. And and then the other place I heard about was from the channel text law of one that I mentioned, where they mm -hmm. talk about what they call the Federation of Light. 
who's this group of extraterrestrial beings who oversees Earth's evolution and protects us from the negative entities that are out there. And sometimes this is where it gets really interesting. Sometimes people will say, well, the Federation, you, you just, people are borrowing that from Star Trek. Like that's not original. But then I found out that Star Trek is based on channeled material. And so the whole, oh, really? The, the word feder, the Federation, the name, the Federation originally came from channeled material. So it's all very fascinating. Yeah. Seriously. Right. So with that foundation, what experiences have your clients had with the Council of Light? They've had the experience of really just going there and being a part of it. So whether it, it usually winds up them just floating there with them and asking questions, questions for themselves, like their own personal stuff uh, that, that comes up or questions for the earth, how to heal the earth or how to connect more. And that's where the water comes up a lot. The music comes up a lot. And using that um, to raise your vibration so that you can make uh, a channel, a connection with them. So right now on Earth, there's, I mean, we see it, right? There's this push and this pull of love and fear. And it looks, it looks like it's clashing a little bit, right? What has come through is they really want people to know that one person can change. You may not know or exactly know how you're changing other people's vibrations, but we think often that just raising our, our vibration, we're just helping ourselves and we're ascending or we're getting closer to source or we're doing our job. But just you making that vibrational change in yourself can help masses of people raise their vibration. And they might not even know it, but they are raising at the same time. So there seems to be from people pulling information in this, this call to, like we hear it all, all the time, right? This call to raise your vibration, not worry about the fear try not to let the fear impact your life and not that you're turning a blind eye but sort of seeing this world as the illusion that it is you know feeling into the higher vibration of it so that you can lift the masses right lift up people along with you and to not so much be in control of it because oh, you know we we want we're humans we want to know exactly what's going on we want to be in control but just working on your own vibrational frequency and just knowing that as you're doing that you're you're lifting so many others while you're doing that so i guess that's the biggest call that's that's come out from the the council of light that i've seen anyway and then using, you know, the how, well, how do I do that? Using infused, you know, high vibration water, music, high vibration music to, to raise your vibration and to be, to have that access, right? Thank you so much for sharing that message. I would love to hear about your personal experience. You mentioned that you had had an experience, an extraterrestrial experience. Yeah, so as a as a hypnotist, like I was saying to you before this, um, I feel like taking people through hypnosis all the time. I it just opens up your mind, it opens up your senses psychically all over all over the place, channeling all the stuff. But earlier this summer, I was going to sleep at night. And just before I fell into sleep, I had this, what seemed like an out-of-body experience, very, very vivid, where I was on this, this ship. I don't know where the ship was, whether it was over Earth or where it was, 
But I was looking into the the glass or what maybe, I don't know if it's glass or not, but I saw my reflection and I was this blue being, not tall blue being, but, you know, average height. And I looked over to my left and I saw this family of blue beings. And then on my right, I had my hand was down on my right, and there was this child being. And I felt so much love for this being. Almost like a, I mean, I don't have kids, but almost like a mother love, right? For this child. And they had their their little blue fingers <laughs> just wrapped, you know, around my hand. And it was just beautiful. And I came out of it. And I was like, oh, okay, that's that's interesting. <laughs> and I fell asleep and got on with my my day the next day. But something interesting happened. A couple days later, I wound up with all along here on my hand, I ended up with this type of eczema. I always forget the name of it, but anyway, it's little bumps, little tiny bumps that usually it's called a heat rash, like heat eczema. And I had it, I could not get rid of it for three weeks to a month. Now, um, I mentioned beforehand the blueprint. So what also has come in, so side story, what also has come in from hypnosis is this idea of our, our blueprint, our blueprint of life. And this this grid system around us that kind of houses, it's kind of like just what's what it seems to be is just outside of our aura, kind of this egg shape. And it's this, if you can imagine, a grid system all around. So people have been doing in the hypnosis session some grid system healing, right? Self-healing. So they go into their grid, what we've, you know, it came through through a, through a past life regression. Uh, and, you know, and I've just been infusing it into each and every session almost because it's so healing. So anyway, I, I thought three weeks later, I'm almost a month later after having this, I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna check out my grid and see what's going on maybe i can do something with this so i i do the work i i go to where my grid seemed to me it looks like it's broken apart it's kind of like if you imagine a hot air balloon with a puncture in it and i'm looking at it and i instantly am taken back to that ship with the aliens and the little the little alien holding on to my thumb and um i'm i'm like okay so what's going on here what am i emotionally attached to because if we think of like louise hay and all the you know the the, the emotional stuff that crops up in our body and we we look at it and we try to do the healing with it right so what i realized was that i was missing there was there was this missing feeling. There was this, well, do they still remember me feeling? And that, like, do they love me feeling? And I heard in my head, it's done. It's done. You're done. It's, it's okay now. And I'm, Melissa, like, not even, it was gone by the next day. Like, it was oh. gone. And so I was, like, the, the eczema was gone. So I was just blown away. And then I just started using it and using it and using it with myself and others in the sessions just to work on, on anything, just to allow it to be part of their journey, right? So that's, that's the blueprint grid work that I got into from having my own uh, extraterrestrial encounter. I don't know what it was, but it was so emotional. Like I, I just, I can't discount it, right? Because it was so emotional. Yeah. Wow. So let me make sure I'm understanding you correctly. Yeah. So you had this experience as an extraterrestrial. And first of all, do you think that that was a past life or a parallel life or something? 
I don't know. Because of how I felt like, am I being missed? Am I still loved as a human being, even though I was or am this being in the ship? I don't know. I, I would say maybe a parallel. But who knows? Maybe I'll, I'll and you know, like when, when I move on from this life, I'll be back on the ship. I don't know. It all seems so weird and wonderful to me, but it's so interesting, right? It's just beyond, just beyond what I, I'm used to. Right. It blows your paradigm open. It does. Yeah. You start to really question reality. I mean, I already do that because of the work I'm in, but you take so many people through this stuff. But when it happens to you, it's amazing. So you've had this memory or experience and then you developed like a eczema on your hand where the little alien had been holding on. Yeah. And that's because you still had some type of emotional attachment to the experience. I, that's what that's what came through, yeah. So when I did the grid work, the blueprint grid work, that's what came up right away. And then the moment that I acknowledged it and thought, okay, yes, I'm, it's okay. I wasn't, I guess, resisting it anymore. The moment I acknowledged it, it, it went away like it was incredible, incredible, fascinating, yeah. Well, Hillary, thank you so much for doing this interview with me and sharing from your experiences. I'd like to give you a chance to share with the viewers more about your work and where they can find you. Yeah, absolutely. I guess below the video, there will be my email, which is info at somhypnosis.com. Uh, you might be wondering what the psalm is. It's I own a, a hypnosis center called State of Mind Hypnosis and Training Center. You can find me through my website, www.psalmhypnosis.com. Uh, and then I think my Calendly link will be down there and you can have a free consult. So I do 45-minute free consults just to understand, you know, what you might want to do, if you have goals, if you're struggling with emotional stuff or want to do past life or life between lives. <laughs> Wonderful. I will have those links in the description. Thank you so much, Hillary. Thank you so much. It's so wonderful speaking with you again about all the weird and wonderful things in the world. <laughs> yeah, this has been one of the most interesting conversations I've had. I really love getting into other planets and extraterrestrials and all the crazy experiences that we can have. It is very cool. Very cool. <laughs> Thank you for watching the Love Cover Life podcast. Don't forget to subscribe, share this video with your friends, and comment with your thoughts and opinions. And check the description box for the links to my TikTok and Instagram where I share the more personal side of my life, my website where I share my paintings and merch, and also the Be A Guest link for anybody who's interested in sharing their story. Be loved, be happy, be at peace, and thank you for watching. Thank you.